Broadcast Network, After Buzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries, and your number one source for after show entertainment. <laughs> TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E Entertainment's Maria Menunos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Hey guys, thank you for tuning in to After Buzz TV's Spotlight On. I'm your host, Stephen Lemieux, joining you for an interview on this Monday, the 16th of February, with an actor, a producer, a guy that you've probably seen before. You've seen him in movies, you've seen him in television, you've even heard his voice in a few cartoons, a few video games. Yep. From Wayne Arnold on The Wonder Years to executive producer of Sea Dad Run, he's a man whose career is continuing to grow and now has landed on WGN's new docu-series entitled Outlaw Country, which is premiering February 24th on WGN at 10, 9 central. We have Jason Hervey with us. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you very much. I, I appreciate being here. What a fun, innovative concept uh, After Buzz is. So great to be here talking about Outlaw Country. Yeah, people come here to talk TV. You're here to talk TV. There you go. I'm so I'm to... in the right place. You are in the right place. So just to give a little bit of background on Outlaw Country, mm -hmm. it's a documentary series that shows both sides of the law and it's kind of interesting because with everything that's going on in the news lately like oh the police officers oh the the brutality mm -hmm. like the who's on the right side mm -hmm. it's not white and black there's always a gray area so mm -hmm. this docu-series kind of is to show that the people on the off side are also human beings as well and there's a whole rhetoric and there's a whole kind of culture to it isn't it so how did you get involved with this to begin with um, well, you've covered a lot of ground. Um, first of all, you know, I, I agree. The, the show is almost kind of a, a, a microcosm of really the headlines, you know, of today and a lot of the stuff that, that we see. But this is more than obviously a news piece or a soundbite. Um, this, this is a series that really um, goes into the lives of each side. And the interesting thing in this, you know, character piece <clears throat> is that on one side you have the Cook brothers that are upholding the law. Mm -hmm. Then on the other side you have the Monk brothers who are allegedly breaking the law. I love that word, and allegedly. It, these, uh, yeah, I got used to saying it a lot in this series. <laughs> um, and um, it's really the cat and mouse um, of the Cook brothers going after the Monk brothers and kind of settling or trying to put them away for good after they put them away over 10 years ago. And this vendetta really kind of plays out in this small town uh, that's completely in crisis where the mayor's put together this task force. And it's again, this very dramatic cat and mouse and, you know, back and forth. Um, but on the series, uh, it, it also explores that maybe the bad guys, even though they're doing bad things, allegedly, that they also have families and their brothers, sons, fathers, and there is a loyalty and a bond between those guys in a group called the Alliance that you cannot but uh, help, uh, in essence, to kind of at least re respect, uh, you know, this group together. And then on the law, even though they are going after the, the monks, I mean, they, they have this hunch and they're following it. And these two federal officers that uh, actually head up the task force, they're following really where the evidence goes. And they have open minds and open ears. And let's just say they're looking at everybody, okay? Um, but the Cook brothers are really focused on putting the monks away. Maybe sometimes even if the evidence leads there, doesn't lead there. And uh, it's really interesting. It is really an incredible, extremely complex series. Um, but uh, I, I really think our proudest work. Well, I don't think anything's really been <clears throat> done like it before from a reality standpoint. Because we were talking about TV earlier, mm -hmm. and Banshee and Sons of Anarchy. Yeah. You mentioned how Kurt Sutter was part of the behind the scenes on this as well, a little yeah. bit. And it's kind of brilliant in its own way that it's it's interesting. It's not something that I've heard of being done. So, but what I have to ask with the cooks and the monks, mm -hmm. was there a difficulty getting in and actually getting the information for the show? Great question. And yeah, I I, uh, I do love those series as you mentioned earlier. And 
uh, through our technical advisor, uh, Chucky, uh, Kurt had appeared in the behind the scenes special, uh, just really as a friend, um, and he kind of said it best, which is, you know, every girl loves a bad boy, you know, for the most part, and there's a certain romanticism that kind of goes with the thought of the outlaw culture and these people that are putting their family first, so to speak, even their family not blood related, but, you know, the people that they consider their family and the risks that they'll take to, you know, defend their, their honor. And it really is all about loyalty and respect in that world. But um, when we went down there, I, I got a phone call from somebody that our company, Bischoff Hervey Entertainment, works with, and he uh, had a uh, relationship with a police chief and a mayor and this task force in, in this town. And so uh, explained about the town and the surge in crime and what was going on and how uh, the mayor of uh, this great town was being very proactive in addressing crime and putting together this task force. Um, and while we were down there, so it sounded fascinating, flew down there, met with the people. And while we were there, um, the Monk brothers got word to us. And they said, hey, uh, word is, is that uh, you guys are putting together a reality show, you know, with these cops, mm. uh, with these cops and this task force. And uh, look, if, if, if you are going to do that, um, we want to tell our story too. And we don't want it to just be one-sided. And those guys have been after us, you know, for years. So it was really the first time uh, we had experienced um, a group like that. Usually you would think would kind of not want to, you know, be yeah, in front of, of the cameras, kind of you know, stay out of the limelight. They invited us in and were very transparent. Um, so it really was a uh, kind of a, a, a windfall to be able to, uh, have access to both sides because usually in a documentary series you're going to follow one side or the other on Outlaw Country premiering February 24th on WGN we actually have the opportunity the rare opportunity to follow both sides did they um, try to review footage or did you guys have full access no to whatever you wanted to put in the show no they no they do not get to review the they, footage so they can't say don't use that uh, they cannot say don't use that well, no that's interesting. Mm -hmm. nope. And I'm, I'm, I, what really excites me is because you say they, the, the Cooks had arrested them 10 years prior. There's a history here that kind of screams bias. Mm -hmm. So you have the point of view of these people who have been dealing with people who are out to get them mm -hmm. as opposed to people who are just doing their job. So it's kind of interesting to see a perspective that's not just, you know, tainted by, oh, we're doing this allegedly bad stuff and the cops are after us. This is... They're under a not, they're under a microscope's eye, and they're still trying to take care of their families. They're still trying to do things while they have the eyes of the cops on them, and while they're kind of under the gun in a way. Yeah, and um, you know that was um, just kind of the start of it back then. I mean, they have had this cat and mouse and this back and forth for you know a very very long time. So. <clears throat> It's not really a one-off or, you know, isolated incident. I mean, these guys have been on each other's tail for an extremely long time. Um, and the, uh, the Monk brothers, um, they've, uh, they've uh, paid their debt to society. Uh, John Monk is a, a free man. He's, he's a businessman uh, and swears that he isn't doing any, you know, wrongdoing. And his brother Josh is a, uh, is a preacher. And um, he has a, uh, a, a men's Bible study group of other people that have either served um, in, uh, in, in jail. They've had their brushes with the law. They've done, you know, uh, uh, drug dealing. Um, they have uh, been, you know, through all kinds of assault charges and everything like that. And uh, he said it uh, best when uh, Rolling Stone magazine said that um, uh, this one particular town in Missouri was like the meth capital of the world. Um, and uh, he realized and woke up uh, one day that he actually wanted to rebuild uh, the very town that he helped destroy. Mm -hmm. So it's just this really interesting character study, again, when you have the Monk brothers on, on, on one side, one set of brothers, and then you have the Cook brothers on the other side. And even though they couldn't be two polar opposite sets of brothers, there's still a commonality and a bond of the loyalty, of the respect, of backing your brother, of being there. And it's just two diametrically opposed sets of brothers, but yet have a lot of, you know, commonality. Um, and uh, it's just a really 
uh, exciting show. It, it is uh, the, the team, the production crew uh, that, that, uh, that put this thing together and put themselves in harm's way to get the shots. Uh, there were some extremely dangerous moments on that show, uh, and yet they were in the right place at the right time to get the shot, tell the story, and make pretty much uh, what, uh, what we feel is the most beautiful docudrama on, on television. Honestly, it really is. So when people tune in to see Outlaw Country on February 24th on WGN, I just what are what are they what are they getting right when right from the first moment they start watching the show? What brings them back for the next episode? Is there any moments that you're just like you will never see this anywhere else? Um, I sure number one is the access. You know the the access to these two. Uh, different sets of brothers, the access to this uh, task force um, with uh, uh, Special Agent Dillman, Special Agent Fingers, um, and uh, uh, an incredible group of uh, law enforcement specialists having that access to those level of professionals. And then, like I said, guys like this uh, in the Alliance with John and Josh Monk and, and their crew of, uh, of guys known as the Alliance, uh, number one, the access, like I said, um, that is something that is extremely in incredible uh, into this unique subculture in, in, in America. And then, of course, um, you have, uh, you know, the, the fact that there's a, a, a lot of action. Uh, not all things appear as, as, as they are. And I think the fun thing, and, and what I mean by that, Stephen, is that a lot of people of, are, of course, going to take sides, you know, whose side do you want, kind of Team Monk or Team Cook. But I think the real question that you're immediately going to ask yourself is, who do you believe? And I mm. think that is a really, really fun and interesting dynamic. And to literally watch this investigation unfold and for Dillman and Fingers to follow the evidence, for the Cook brothers to, in essence, uh, follow the monks, um, Dillman and Fingers to look at everybody, maybe including even some people in the task force, and then have uh, the uh, the monks swear that they're up to, uh, that they're not up to any wrongdoing. Um, so, like, there are a lot of, I know it sounds like a lot, because it is a lot, and that's what you get when you watch Outlaw Country, is you're going to be entertained, you're going to be educated, uh, you're going to be on the edge of your seat, and you are going to ask yourself, who do I believe? And, of course, there's um, some incredible action. I'm, I'm looking forward to the action. I'm looking forward to wondering who I believe, and I have a feeling that my girlfriend's uh, daughter of a police officer. I have a feeling who I have to believe. But <laughs> okay, right on. That's cool, but man. Nothing but respect to it's law always, enforcement. It's always, it's always good when you get both sides of the story as opposed to just one, because right. without both sides, then our trust the system wouldn't work at all. Mm -hmm. But when I'm talking about people I want to believe, I want to believe you, Jason, and I want to believe yeah. how, I want to know how you got involved with this? Were you always passionate about this? Because you are from L.A., but about five years ago you moved to Nashville, both places with very prominent police forces. Mm -hmm. um, were you always fascinated by, by the law and which side and everything that has to do with the outlaw? Um, you know what? Um, my business partner, Eric Bischoff, and myself, we have uh, always had a, a similar passion for uh, riding Harleys and you know motorcycles and, and, and being in... Um, you know, just kind of being in that in environment. Um, and growing up in Southern California, um, I have uh, several friends that are um, a part of different motorcycle clubs. And uh, again, nothing but respect for, you know, that world and uh, the code that they live by. Um, so I think that as, a, as, a, as an actor, you know, I had um, always kind of like playing you know, the bad boy, the jerk, you know, whatever, um, somebody that wasn't the, the, the goody two shoes. <laughs> and as a, and as a producer, uh, we tend to, you know, create stuff that, you know, we probably want to want to watch ourselves. And as we talked about earlier, uh, uh Banshee and well, Sons of Anarchy, one of, one, one of the best dramas. And we talked about Boardwalk Empire and, <laughs> uh, you know, some, some of those things. Um, I just really like, the bad guys, uh, <laughs> uh, honestly, because 
the trick as an actor and as a producer is finding the lovable things also or the admirable things about the it. humanity and the humanity you know b behind that and no matter you know kind of not necessarily how bad they are but when they kind of do bad things you're you're gonna see the the moments and things that led up to it so it actually kind of feels justified so you as the viewer um, as an actor you know or or producer you know you know cr creating this work is you're going to give yourself permission to actually kind of be okay with what they are doing because you've humanized you know mm -hmm. the, them as as, uh, as as we've talked about but um, you know, I know law enforcement uh, guys as uh, as well, and you know nothing but uh, nothing but respect to them. So, have always wanted to do a series that are in the law enforcement space. Have done a series that are, well, from the Devil's Ride and and now on Discovery Channel, um, but now really the 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 ultimate uh, here with uh, Outlaw Country on on WGN on February twenty fourth. Um, so to actually get the chance to. Uh, to do one show that <laughs> you know that has both sides of of those things that I'm I'm passionate about was really kind of an embarrassment of riches and and, and a creative uh, windfall of uh, of character and and story and getting uh, into those um, uh, moments on on both sides you know of the law enforcement you know and on the uh, side of the alliance so. Um, you know, we, at least for us, you know, we tend to kind of gravita gravitate towards, you know, projects, again, that we're passionate about because yeah. it, all, it all starts with being uh, passionate and uh, we couldn't uh, be more passionate about, uh, about Outlaw Country and it's just one hell of a series. So I got to ask, though, because you are such a fan of these shows mm -hmm. like uh, Banshee and Boardwalk Empire. And they all seem to romanticize this idea of being the bad guy. Because, you know, as an actor, you always want to be the bad guy. When you're a kid, sure. you want to be the bad boy. You want to pick up the girls. Right. Has being a part of this docuseries, Outlaw Country, has this kind of changed your view on how it's not actually as romantic as it seems? I, uh, that's great. Uh, I think no matter what, if you don't view some of this as a cautionary tale, you know, then you're not really paying attention. Um, however, um, there's a lot of backstory and there's a lot of explanation about why they are uh, the way they were, or maybe the way they are. Uh, you know, that, that uh, you gotta watch the show, Stephen, to, uh, you know, to, to figure that one out. But um, I, I, I think that, you know, sure, when you're living in, in that world uh, that is uh, treacherous, you have to watch your back, um, and it's a kind of 365-day-a-year thing as opposed to an hour of a, you know, snapshot uh, in, into that life. Uh, uh, sure, I mean, it is not for uh, the, the, uh, the faint of heart uh, by, by any stretch, but being as close to uh, this, uh, this world as we've become and immersing ourselves uh, uh, into uh, this, uh, th this, this world and this lifestyle and through the education of uh, even our uh, technical advisor, Chucky. I mean, that guy has been to, uh, uh, been to prison for many, many years. And um, that is somebody who we've worked with, like I said, as our, our, our technical advisor uh, for a long time. And uh, uh, I, if anything, we have more respect both for law enforcement and we have, you know, a, a ton of respect for people living what is called, uh, you know, that outlaw uh, lifestyle uh, or, or culture. So if anything, we walked away with having, uh, even though we've always had respect for it, I've always personally had respect for it. Um, we even have more respect for it now because we got so close to it and because it's not, you know, as romantic as, uh, as, <laughs> as, uh, as, as portrayed. So, you know, uh, but like I said, it's also part cautionary tale at the same time. So one last question mm -hmm. and it's, it's a little bit of a hardball. Okay. You ready for it? Go. So a lot is in the news recently mm -hmm. about police brutality and also with people who can't actually find a job because of their previous convictions and things like that where it kind of the law sometimes prevents people from becoming an upright citizen again because they're forced back into becoming the outlaw just to be able to provide for the families like you were talking about. Will this show cover those hard points throughout the docuseries? 
You know, I, I think that's not really up to me to tell you the viewing experience you should have with the show. Stephen, I think it's up, uh, up to you to really take away with what you take away from it. And as, uh, as, um, as an executive producer of the series, um, it's really not even so much about my opinion. Our job was to lay out the facts, lay out the situation, tell the story on a fair and, you know, a, a balanced equality of giving both sides, you know, as, as, as much time as the other. And the takeaway for you is going to be different than it is for me as it is for a lot of other people. So uh, I would have to say, let's, let's have that, let's put a pin in that and have the conversation after you watch the series because I wouldn't, like I said, want to kind of spoil your takeaway and <laughs> tell you what you should get from the show. I want you to get that uh, for, for yourself because I think it's going to mean a lot of different things to a lot of people and we do cover a lot of ground on the show. Well, I'm excited to I'm excited to watch it February 24th yes. at 10 9 Central WGN. on WGN. Um, well, if people want to talk to you about their opinions on the show, where will they find you on Twitter to shoot you some messages about how they loved it? Uh, they can uh, always get uh, a hold of us, of course, at um, the uh, WGN Twitter, mm -hmm. which is uh, Outlaw WG or at what is it, Terry? <laughs> <laughs> Pineapple. What is it? Let's edit this shit um, out, Stephen. Outlaw Country. We will get that for you. We are live. Oh, well, we are? Cool. But, uh, Can I swear? Because I just did. I said the S word. Can I say totally S-H-I-T? Is that you, cool, Stephen? You can totally say All right. that. That's totally so fine. right now, here's what's going on. Jason Hervey has no idea the show's exact Twitter handle, and I don't want to give fans the wrong info. So thank goodness Terry from WGN is here. Who's going to bail me out of this? All right. However, I do know my Twitter, which is at Jason Hervey. Pretty easy. You could follow my business partner at Eric Bischoff. You could follow our production company at BHE TV. Terry, I'm killing time. I'm running out of Twitter handles. <laughs> you can All find right. me on Twitter you, you at Stephen, Stephen Lemieux. That's right. S T P H N L E M I E U X. I'm following you, baby. And what? then Outlaw WGNA. All right. Okay, there we go. And so. where you can find the Outlaw Twitter to talk about the show is at Outlaw, Outlaw WGNA. WGNA. Whew. That's where you can talk about the show, That's you guys. Right. And Facebook. Wait, wait, Terry, what's Facebook? Hold on, we got to like <laughs> Facebook. Hold on, we got to like us on Facebook. Hold on, man. Everyone's on Facebook. Of course, as Terry puts away her iPhone. Exactly. Baby, we're live. Come on, Terry. WGNAamerica.com. You'll find all of the information yeah, right there. Yeah, there we go. There you go. Yes, there. thank you, Terry. Well, yes. everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to tune in live because they need those results. Guys, I mean, DVR it, but if you can watch live, definitely watch live. Yeah, live. February 24th, 10, 9 central on WGN. Watch it. Outlaw Country. It's going to be on. You better be there. I'm going to be there. Uh, guys, again, follow AfterBuzz TV at AfterBuzz TV. Check us out on YouTube and subscribe at www.youtube.com slash AfterBuzz TV. And be sure to download us on iTunes. Throw us a little subscribe on iTunes, maybe a five-star rating, a comment, and hit us up on SoundCloud. We're one of the first podcasts to be available on SoundCloud now. So you can check out all our roster of over 400 after shows there, as well as special interviews with great guests like Jason Hervey. Thank you. Jason, thank you so much for coming Appreciate in Appreciate it. See, Stephen remembered all of like the appropriate handles and everything like that. Yeah. You did good. Yeah, thank that you. Was awesome. I got to work on that. <laughs> thank you very much. We'll see you guys next time. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.